Today, we're talking about fake Google reviews. This generally fall into one of three categories. One, reviews submitted by family, friends, and employees who have not bought the product or used the services. This is not the most ethical thing to do, especially if these reviewers are not disclosing their personal relationship to the company. But there are only so many people a business owner can ask to do this, so it's generally the least harmful kind of fake review. Two, incentivized reviews. This includes offering discounts, gift cards, free products or services to legitimate customers in exchange for reviews. It is legal to offer this kind of incentives, but the FTC requires that customers disclose that in the review itself. 3. Paying for reviews from fake customers. This is the biggest and the most harmful category. These reviewers have no knowledge of the business owner or the services they are offering, and they are also the reviews that Google is most concerned with filtering out. For this video, we are focusing on that third category. We'll cover how companies buy fake reviews, what Google does to filter them, and how to spot them. Then, we're going to give some examples of roofing companies who may or may not be buying reviews and talk to an expert about what to do if you have legitimate reviews being filtered out. Part 1. Buying fake reviews. It's impossible to know the total number of reviews that Google is filtering out because they don't disclose that information. But some research has found that up to 30% of all online reviews are fake. If you look at the number of websites selling reviews, there is a clearly a big market for them. Our research found that websites are charging anywhere from $5 to $25 per review. We're not going to name any because we don't want to promote them, but they are not hard to find. Part 2. How does Google filter reviews? If you notice less spammy Google reviews this past year, there is a reason for that. In late 2021, the FTC issued a statement putting companies on notice for fake and deceptive reviews, and they backed that up in January 2022 by fining the online store fashion Nova $4.2 million for review abuses and releasing a guide for review moderation. One month later, Google announced it was using machine learning or AI to help filter reviews on its platform. Mike Blumenthal has been helping companies understand and use Google reviews for 15 years through his research, writing and consulting business. After Google updated its filter in 2022, he noticed an uptick in companies who had legitimate reviews being suppressed. I spent last summer helping small businesses in their forums with reviews that weren't showing due to the review filter that should have shown. And I determined that the review filter that they put in place is a much more sophisticated filter. It clearly uses AI and machine learning to look at the total sort of gestalt of the reviews. Mike says before this update, Google will filter out reviews based on a suspicious IP address or if they had swear words. Now it takes into account many more factors. So it looks at the review itself, the words in it, the photos attached to it. If the photos have something inappropriate, they might get taken down. It looks at the, the reviewer, their history, where they have traveled, where they live, where they've reviewed. It looks at the business, um, what category are they in? What is the velocity of the reviews coming into that business? It looks at the rating of the review takes all of that, builds some sort of score. We don't know what the scoring system is. It's an internal secret to Google. Build some sort of score. And if it exceeds a score, then the review gets filtered. Mike surveyed 280 companies through Google's business profile forum and found that industries where customers were not always visiting and brick and mortar locations were more likely to have legitimate reviews filtered out. This includes things like roofing, construction, and real estate where customers are submitting their reviews from many different places. The machine has been trained on historical data. And historically, there's been a lot of abuses where businesses buy fake reviews in those industries, not necessarily in roofing, but in all of those sort of service area businesses, there's been a lot of historic uh, review abuses with buying fake reviews. So it's why the algorithm sort of focus there, not that that's the only place that happens. But even with the stricter standards, some fake reviews are still making it through. So how do you spot them? Part 3. Signs of fake reviews. 
Because Google now filters out most of the obvious spam messages, it can be tricky to determine whether one review on its own is fake. But if you look at both individual reviews and the larger data set for a given company, you can get a better picture. Here are some of the warning signs for individual reviews. Incorrect spellings or grammar. Awkward or incorrect word usage. Overly positive reviews and repeated exclamation points. Profiles that have only submitted one or two reviews. Profiles that have submitted reviews for businesses that are far away from each other. Reviews that appear to copy phrases from company's website or talk about things unrelated to the product or service. And here are some warning signs when looking at a company's reviews overall. Multiple profiles submitting the same review or repeating the same phrases. A high number of reviews relative to the business's age and size. High number of reviews within a particular week or a month. A wide disparity in the star rating, for example, a company only with one star and five star reviews, but none in the middle. It's important to note that a lot of these factors on their own do not mean a company has a fake reviews. The more reviews they have, the more accurately you can judge. Examples. Our audience sent us a lot of tips about fake reviews. We cannot say with 100% certainty whether the examples we choose are paying for the reviews, but we can point out some of the things we found in our research and you can judge for yourselves. First is All Seasons Roofing and Restoration in Loveland, Colorado. This is the smallest data set we look at with 73 Google reviews. Even with a small number of reviews, we found a lot of repeated sentences and double exclamation points. Tucker Lawson used the phrase, it was really a pleasure working with the team and Daryl. Alfredo Bankrupt says, it was a real pleasure working with Daryl. Dupol Caton says, it was a real pleasure working with them. You can also see how many times highly recommended have been pointed at all of these reviews. It was a real pleasure working with them, highly recommended. It was a real pleasure working with them, highly recommended. By searching the reviews for a week, months, and a year, we can also look at when they were submitted. If the owner responds to a review, that timestamps will also show up in the search. So keep in mind that owner replies are included in these numbers. All season has a high number of posts from four, five, and six months ago. There could be multiple reasons for this, but given the repetitive language we found in the reviews, it does make them more suspicious. Our next example is Savage Roofing in Crest Hills, Illinois. They have 630 Google reviews, and the majority of these are five stars, but they have some in each category. We found a couple of reviews posted almost word for word by different profiles. Joseph Barnes, three reviews. Jose and Daniel were incredibly knowledgeable and gave the best advice for the recommendation while also providing the best service. The work was done quickly, same day of arrival while done professionally. Daniel Ford, 10 months ago. Jose and Daniel were incredibly knowledgeable and gave the best advice for the recommendation while also providing the best service. And a few more duplicate reviews in Spanish. Excellent service, very friendly and very professional thanks to Mr. Jose Valdez and the Savage Roofing Team. Excellent service, very friendly and very professional thanks to Diana at Savage Roofing Team. These two reviewers actually say they work for competitors. As a competitor contractor in the area, I smile when I see Savage sign in the areas I'm working because I know that customer is getting the service they deserve. Proud to do business side by side with a great company. We also found one review that appears to be written by an employee. Here at Savage Roofing, our top priority is great customer service. I'm blessed to be added to this awesome team. You can see that the number of Savage reviews from the last four weeks is equal to 50% of all the reviews they received from March 2022 to March 2023. Again, there could be multiple reasons for this, but in combination with the other things we found, it does not look great. Our last example for today is Viking Contractors LLC in Bloomington, Minnesota. They have 441 Google reviews. Again, mostly five stars, but there is a mix. Like with Savage, we found several reviews copied word for word and posted by different profiles. These guys are the good guys of roofing down to earth, friendly, funny, and really go out of their way to help people. During some other renovations of our home, we were told that was existing roof damage that needed to be fixed. I explained this to Viking Contractors company when they came out for an estimate and I feel like they really understood our situation. There wasn't high pressure sales tactics. They told us they needed to be fixed and gave us a reasonable estimate. 
We also found reviews that repeated the same sentences or phrases with the slight variations. From Ann Carlson, Jenny Moore, Eric Helsenberg, both the roofing crew and the gutter crew were professional and extremely hardworking. And while positive reviews are not a red flag by themselves, some of the Vikings review seems overly positive. Keep in mind, these people are talking about getting their roof replaced, which is generally not an exciting experience. They used words like, I'm overjoyed with the results. This company is a brilliant example of what can happen when you put in the effort, stick to your principles and market yourself. I was thrilled to find out that Viking Contractors was available. You can see they have a high proportion of their reviews submitted 5, 6, 7 and 10 months ago as compared to the rest of the year. Part 5. What to do if your legit reviews are being filtered out? So we know that Google still does let through fake reviews, and the stronger the filter gets, the more likely it is to suppress real reviews. If you're in a situation, Mike Blumenthal says, you should keep track of the suppressed reviews and submit them to Google business profile forms to see if they can get reinstated. There's two ways that reviews get filtered out. One is before you even see them they get filtered by Google. And the other is they'll show up on your listing and then they'll get filtered. Now, if they show up on your listing and you're doing review management through a SaaS software or some sort of software or you're keeping track of reviews, one, you will have gotten an email of that review so you know what it said. Or maybe you have, like I said, an online software package that helps you get and manage reviews. You can keep track of them that way. You then need to submit that missing review, username and the content of the review or a screenshot via the Google business profile forums and ask that it be escalated. We have a fairly high rate of recovery of those reviews, not all of them. If you don't have a record of the review, but you know one was submitted, you'll need the customer to send you a screenshot. You can also ask your customers to review on multiple platforms. Two things I'm recommending to businesses. One is that you diversify where you're asking for reviews. Even asking them to give you reviews directly, it may slow down your velocity at Google, but that's a good thing because Google will then perceive that as not as likely to trigger the filters. And I would also, though, have them explain to the client, Google is being a little flaky and that they might want to send them a screenshot just so that in case it gets lost, that they can be recovered because without the screenshot, it's very difficult to recover. If you have more questions for Mike Blumenthal, you can find him on his website and near media. Comment below, what's your biggest problem with the reviews today? Do you struggle? Do you have Google suppressing your reviews? We read all our comments and we value your feedback. Comment away and I'll see you guys in the next video.